Pinky Penguins! This is Nico B, here with something a little different. So this is actually a one-off video that I've wanted to do for quite a while. And it's a little different from other types of shout-out videos. It's not something I see YouTubers do very often, and uh, something I, I don't know, I thought maybe I'd try to see if I could change. Because I think it's something that YouTubers are, honestly, very passionate about. And that is other YouTubers. <laughs> so what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm, I'm gonna be talking about the channels that I am subscribed to. Um, I guess you could sort of think of it as a bit of a, a shout out, but it's kind of different from like regular ones because it's because this is gonna be both big channels and small channels. But the ones that I've considered like, oh, these channels are, are ones that I enjoy to the point that I subscribe to them. And I will say, I'm not someone who's subscribed to like hundreds of channels or anything. I, I think in total I have about 50, but I think it would make for kind of an interesting kind of video because well, one, if you've never heard of any of these people, then yes, it would be a bit of a shout because then you can go point you in that direction. Um, however, a lot of these guys you probably have heard of before, so it's gonna be like more sharing and uh, an experience. You guys will learn a little bit more about me and the kinds of things that I'm interested in, the types of videos that draw my attention. And if it's someone that you guys have seen or heard of before, then you know, you can kind of share that with me, you know, like, oh, remember this guy when he does this thing? Because there are a lot of YouTubers that I really uh, enjoy their content a great deal, who have just brought me years of quality content and just an endless amount of joy. So in a, another way, I'm also sort of trying to pay those people back in a, some small way, uh, the joy that they brought me over the many years. Because of course I'm passionate about my own channel. I That's where my majority of my focus goes, but man, I have really grown to love a lot of other YouTubers and just the, the work that they put into their videos, as well as being just inspired by them. So I guess you can consider this a bit of a love letter to those channels I'm subscribed to. Just something to show that uh, what their impact is meant to me. But yeah, I thought this would make for an interesting video. So uh, you're probably wondering, well, Nico, does that mean you're gonna talk about all 50 of these channels? Uh, no, <laughs> probably not, at least not in the same level of detail. So what my, my big focus for this video is I'm gonna talk mostly uh, in more detail about the channels that are gaming related. Um, because that's, I mean, that's what I do, right? That's what you guys are here for. So that would honestly be probably the thing that you're most interested in. However, before I get into that, I do wanna at least bring up some of the other channels that I am subscribed to that aren't gaming related, but are still uh, uh, important to me, you know? Just very briefly here, because like I said, this is probably gonna still be a pretty hefty video just with the gaming ones, so. So let's go ahead and just start off here real quick. So Philip DeFranco, he's pretty much my go-to news guy. One of the reasons I particularly like him is because out of all the places where I get my news, I find find him to be the least biased and uh, just a great all around place to get information, not just for real world events, but also uh, things involved with YouTube itself, which is super important for me. But yeah, honestly, if you're looking for just a charismatic guy who's, who tries his best to uh, uh, play to both sides, uh, it's, I really couldn't recommend it more. Corridor Digital, oh my God, these guys, these, are, these guys are what Freddy Wong, I wish he remained as. And yes, I, I know it's a bit of a jab at Freddy. Not that I, I dislike Freddy's stuff, but, um, He's moved away a bit more from the uh, the the fun little mini CG videos that are just are kind of like one offs. Uh, but Corridor Digital, they revel in it. Um, so many just excellent, hilarious videos. A lot of John Wick stuff, Game of Thrones, The Matrix, Nerf guns, Portal, just. And th their stuff's always great, super enjoyable. If you like creators that really d dabble into the special effects and guns. <laughs> Team Four Star, of course. You the freaking classic. I watched them, of course, for Dragon Ball Z Bridge, which is just brilliantly written, honestly. It's hilarious. It actually proves a lot of the story of the original Dragon Ball. I will say that's kind of the main thing I go to them for. They do also do other series like Final Fantasy VII uh, Machina Bridged, but I'm not as crazy about that series as that one. And things like Helsing Bridge that I've never seen the original, so I, I, I wouldn't really have any reason to watch it. Adibs, Adibs TV, of course. Man, Adibs, you, you never know what you're gonna expect with him. He's always just coming up with some new random shit, whether it's his content comp, which are these deep dives into individual YouTubers, his bad unboxing videos, those times he just randomly hangs out with other YouTubers and goes and like hunts for food or something, I don't know. Or in his little vlog channel where he hunts squirrels, by which I mean he, he finds squirrels that are digging holes in his yard, he puts them into cages and then he takes them and he puts them somewhere else. He doesn't kill them, he doesn't kill them, he just moves up just the weirdest fucking videos but for some reason i've watched all of them and they're all they're all hilarious yeah he's i know is a, is a special human being and deserving of anyone's attention <laughs> jaden animations oh my god she is just delightful seriously i love her uh her videos where she just talks about her life talks about different aspects of herself 
Uh, beautiful animation. She's got a lot more help now from other animators to really improve uh, the quality of her videos, which just look fantastic. In particular, the one video where she talked about her relationships with people seriously has some of the best messages I like I've shared with some of my moderators, which is just how just absolutely uh, amazing the themes behind that video are and what's the most important thing to focus on in life. You know, it's it's honestly a incredibly well written and uh, delightful video. And it's something that I think anybody should watch, uh, especially if you've ever been in a toxic relationship. The slow-mo guys, the, 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 the name says it all. It's the guys that this basically show stuff go in slow motion, like things exploding and uh, watermelons being shot at things. And like, seriously, it's amazing. The number of things you can show in slow motion and how fucking cool it looks, all right? That's basically it. It's just these two guys, Dan and Gav, and them going about and just blowing shit up. And it's 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 great, all right? I could watch for hours. Also, the two of them are really pretty likable. So uh, there's some of the guys behind the rooster teeth thing. So small guys, I, I like their stuff. Everything Apple Pro. This is the guy that I go for for pretty much all of my Apple stuff because I do actually have an iPhone. Very knowledgeable. Like he is super, super immersed in that Apple freaking lifestyle. Despite the name of it, he isn't actually like always an avid fan of Apple. He will talk about their criticisms, but uh, it's interesting. I mean, it, like I usually use it just to keep up with all the latest stupid shit that Apple's doing. Most of the time it's fucking up these days. I just want to get rid of the stupid notch on the fucking phone. That's all I've been waiting for. I've been stuck with my iPhone 7 for ages now. But yeah, if you're looking for anything that uh, covers Apple products, uh, it's still a great place to stop by. The V Collector. Oh my God. I love this dude. <laughs> this is my, this is pretty much the, my go-to place for figure reviews. This guy, I... This guy has the most ridiculous collection of figures. Seriously, you guys think I'm bad. This guy, man, this guy. I don't know what job he has to have to be able to afford all the crazy shit he gets, but man, it, 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 it can't just be the YouTube dollars, okay? There's just no way. Just gets the biggest, most extravagant, ridiculous figures. All the ones you want to get, but you're like, there's no fucking way I'm going to pay a thousand bucks for this thing. He gets them. The quality of his, his videos are really good. I love it. If you're as big of a figure dork as I become, uh, yeah, definitely check him out. The Out One's Out, the animation channel that uh, is, again, very similar to uh, Jaden's. I'd say his is more uh, focused on sort of the snarky comedy. I mean, he definitely talks about his uh, his own childhood and stuff, but a bit more of a sarcastic edge, I think, than maybe Jaden does. Uh, Jaden comes across a little more genuine. Not to say that his isn't, but sometimes his stuff can be played. I sometimes feels played up a little bit. Uh, still incredibly uh, enjoyable though, uh, and his animation again is fantastic. The videos where he talked about his uh, time working at Subway was, were especially hilarious and incredibly relatable for anyone who's had a job in the food industry. Smooth McGroove. So this guy's a acapella channel. He makes acapella renditions for a lot of songs from games, uh, anime, things like that. And I will say his uh, upload schedule is pretty sporadic. Like sometimes he'll just go months on end without uploading anything, but uh, the work that he does do when he does release it. Uh, is always incredible, like unbelievable. Like he's super talented. Also, he's got a cute little black cat, which is always with him in all of his videos. But yeah, if you like, if you like any kind of acapella, uh, or actually just any kind of game music, I really recommend looking him up. He's already done a ton of songs. And finally, for my non-gaming related stuff, I guess I guess technically Smooth McGroove could have been game related, but Little Karibo. Honestly, I I watch him basically for his uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Bridge series, which is actually a series I haven't even really watched the entirety of. I've only seen tiny little bits of it, but his videos, the bridge series of it are so funny that I uh, I just, I can't help myself. I, I, I honestly, it was really my friend Ice Pick, because he did actually uh, watch Yu-Gi-Oh! and then told me about Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge, and he was sort of the one that got me into this series. And even just not knowing the context of some of the jokes is still just crazy hilarious. And uh, he's a super talented voice actor too, just hearing that his range is, uh, also very uh, inspiring, so. But okay, so then, yes, that already that already took way longer than I thought it would. I was like, I'm just gonna go real quick through the ones that aren't gaming related. And I still end up talking on end for a lot of them. So this video is gonna be like eight hours. So those are all the channels that I'm subscribed to that aren't really game related. One last one I did actually wanna bring up. Uh, and that is actually Let's Play channels. Believe it or not, I'm not really subscribed to like any Let's Play channels, at least not many. And maybe that's weird because I am a Let's Player or maybe that's normal, I I'm not really sure. Um, it, mostly it's because of a conflict of interest. A lot of times I don't watch these Let's Play channels because I might potentially play a game that they're playing at some point, or they're already playing a game that I've already Let's Played, you know? So not not anything against them personally, it's just more of a uh, of an occupational thing, I guess. That said though, I do want to at least point out some, some channels that coming from a Let's Player, I, I can say for certain that if you watch them, you will get some excellent Let's Play content. Throw out some real obvious ones. Jack Spadicey! Top of the morning to you, 
his name is John Zogar. I've seen some of his stuff, and it's just he's great. He's so good. He's so he's such a nice, like down to earth guy. He seems like one of the like one of the genuinely nicest people on YouTube. Great attitude, um, and just brings a lot of really great energy into his videos. Honestly, if you need any kind of great let's plays, I think he's, he's an easy pick. Of course, there's Markiplier. Also another classic. I really only watched his really his FNAF videos, to be honest, uh, because they were incredibly entertaining. I have seen some of I have dabbled in some of his other stuff, but like I said, uh, let's play occupational thing like that. But he is also very, uh, very nice, uh, very genuine. He's been doing a lot of stuff. Like, I think he did, like, a live tour or something at one point. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? God damn. Is that an option for YouTubers now? Not even the fuck. Uh, Luka Jin. She, uh, actually plays a lot of games that are uh, very similar to mine. Um, but she is just delightful. I've watched, I still watched uh, a few of her videos. Uh, great sense of humor. Uh, she's also the wife of, uh, Proton John, I believe, who is also great. Although John doesn't actually post on his main YouTube channel very much, but he does live stream a lot on Twitch. So, which are awesome, by the way. I have checked, I have checked out his live streams and they are just delightful. Along the same lines, uh, Nintendo Capri Sun does a lot of Let's Plays as well as, uh, deep dives into certain games. Also a great Let's Player. I, I, I personally really enjoyed his, uh, his Banjo Kazooie where he talked about when it deep dive into those games that are very interesting but he has great genuine raw reactions to everything and uh yes overall very delightful person definitely recommend them chugga conroy one of the og let's players so unlike a lot of other let's players like myself who do mainly blind reactions uh chugga actually goes through and does in-depth walkthroughs for each of his games going out of his way to describe specific mechanics the best way to approach certain bosses what to do in moments when you get really stuck however he also does it in a way that's incredibly entertaining and also incredibly funny and chugga man he's been in this game for a long time he's one of the people who honestly pop helped to popularize the let's plays so he's truly a senpai to all of us let's players he's a classic let's player that's still one of the best in the game and i think that's it all right <laughs> so that that's all the stuff that those are like basically like honorable mentions i guess jesus christ how far am i into this video already all right now for the actual meat and potatoes of this video. So I'm going to talk about the people that I'm subscribed to who are game related. Uh, and I want to go into at least a deep amount of depth with them. Let me go ahead and get the big fatty out of the way. Okay, nobody, like, I don't think anyone on this fucking platform doesn't know who this guy is by this point. 97 bajillion subs. I've been subscribed to PewDiePie for a long time. Like back during his Amnesia Let's Plays. Um, and he was honestly a big motivator for me in my my start to youtube i think in a lot of ways my my voices that i started with were inspired a bit by him giving voices to inanimate objects and just random shit which i honestly found to be incredibly funny but he an interesting one though just because he's been on the platform now for so long and he's gone through so many different phases like he started off as a horror gamer with amnesia and random just one-off horror games. Then he moved on to more regular games. Then eventually he just put games behind him and he started doing things that are more along the lines of like Filthy Frank and Goofy Skits and unboxing videos. And then he moved on to another phase, mainly of uh, evolving memes and meme review and, and the why. And now he seems to be going through a, a serious Minecraft phase, which does not seem to be letting up anytime soon. And I will say I've actually been watching his Minecraft Let's Plays and uh, it actually kind of got me back into Minecraft too. God damn, I gotta say, I bet that Mojang is like, thank you, Christ. His stuff, you can just bet. Like, the massive resurgence in Minecraft lately, so much of it has been attributed, I think, to uh, to Felix's uh, Let's Play series. And honestly, it's been pretty fun to watch. It is surprisingly wholesome. I, I never thought I would uh, attribute uh, Pootie Pie to wholesome before, <laughs> but it's it's really quite cute. But yeah, I've been watching for so long, and I just I think just to say that he is an influential uh, factor on YouTube would be just understating just how much of an impact he's had on uh, not just the platform itself, but individual creators. You know, their beginnings. Uh, and I, I'm definitely one of them. I'm definitely with someone I think he was influenced by uh, his work. And even now, I still watch a lot of his stuff. I mean, I think I probably, I think during his Filthy Frank stuff is when I, I sort of wasn't watching him as much. Um, but I thought his uh, his meme stuff was still pretty funny. And the Minecraft stuff, I'm actually really enjoying. I'd be curious to see how long this goes on for. And afterwards, what he moves on to something else. It's actually really impressive that uh, a, a channel of his size could pivot so much so many times and still bring in such a massive audience for his videos like it really does say something i think to his 
uh, creativity and his ability to entertain. Because I think with other channels, uh, their, their channels would die piv pivoting that much, you know? But the fact that he managed to make it work is, is really impressive. So, uh, so Felix, thanks, man. Thanks for the, your, your own inspirations. Thanks for inspiring a whole bunch of other Let's Players like myself and uh, for uh, helping make this platform into uh, some fun, you know? I look forward to seeing whatever crazy shit you come up with. All right, next up, we've got Maximilian Dude. So if you haven't heard this guy, this guy is uh, sort of the go-to fighting game YouTuber. He's someone that dabbles in a lot of different fighting games, uh, from Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat to Killer Instinct to King of Fighters to Guilty Gear. Whatever, you name it, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That's actually how I came across him initially. It was back uh, when Fighter Z was uh, was getting ready to release. He was doing these individual breakdowns of characters, uh, discussing their moves and stuff. So I watched him for that, and then I began watching his his more regular videos and even his Twitch live streams. And I really became a massive fan of his. Like I will say, I think of all these YouTubers I'm about to point out, I think this is the one that at least in the past. A uh, year or so has had a uh, uh, a big impact on me. Max is a very passionate, very genuine guy. Someone who loves, loves the series that he's a fan of. And he just invests so much of himself into each of these games. It's just, it's honestly just incredibly inspiring and heartwarming to see just how much he cares about series like uh, with the Devil May Cry series. Just see the, the pure joy he had from just how excellent that game ended up being. It was just kind of the way I felt too. It was just like, man, this game is unbelievable. The joy that it gets from the Final Fantasy VII remake. The Final Fantasy VII being one of his favorite games, just like it is one of mine as well. And just seeing his excitement and his love for these games. Oh my fucking God. Oh my fucking god. And of course, in addition to that, he's also just an incredibly talented member of the fighting game community. He knows his stuff in and out. But he's also someone who knows what his uh, community wants. The types of fighting games and the types of characters, the types of things that they want to see in these fighting games. He's constantly talking with his fans on Twitter and Twitch and YouTube, and then communicating those ideas to the developers of these fighting games to try and improve them and make them better and it's it's just incredibly respectable. Like I'm not really a big like Twitch live stream watching guy and I watch almost all of his live streams now. So if you're watching his stream live, there's a good chance I'm there too. So feel free to say hi to me if I, if you see me. But I think one moment in particular that really just shows that that love and that joy uh was when he was describing his meeting with the people behind the Final Fantasy VII Remake, who involved uh, staff and members from the creation of the original Final Fantasy VII, and just the meeting that he had with them, where he talked about how he wanted a picture with them, and then suddenly they wanted a picture with him, which he was a bit confused about, and then they told him this. When things were tough for the team, and they were trying to figure things out, and what was like the right choice, uh, he was saying they always showed the team the video from the first reaction, the one where we first saw FF7, that I made like a story out of it. I don't want to believe it. Look at it already! Are coming back. He was saying that whenever the team was feeling down, and he wanted to motivate everybody, they would watch that video. And it said he it gave them energy to try to go forward and make the right choices. Holy shit, dude. Even when I was there, this didn't hit me that hard. Just, just thinking about it in, uh, in retrospect is fucking tough. Just seeing him be so emotional about it, just seeing this, like, how important and how significant that was to him, um, I don't know. It, it stands out to me. It makes an impact. Because I, I just, I like seeing that. I like seeing that passion from people, you know? For things that they love. And I think Maximilian Dude is definitely a guy that, even if you're not into fighting games, he will make a fan out of you. And this has come from someone who really isn't much of like a fighting game fanatic either, but he makes everything that he touches just an absolute delight to watch and to be a part of. Can't recommend it enough. Seriously, please go check him out. All right, next up we got Some Call Me Johnny. Oh man, I love Johnny. <laughs> Goddamn. So yes, he's best known for his Versus series where he tackles uh, individual games, goes into a uh, nice little deep dive and discussion about uh, what the story is, what the gameplay mechanics are, 
uh, whether it's fun or interesting, some of the bad things about it, of course. It feels like you talk to a good friend about a game they've played a bunch of times. And his videos are both interesting, but also hilarious. God, there have been some moments during his videos I've just laughed my ass off. One moment in particular, that really just, like, I laugh, I just laugh at this every time I see it. It was during his Sonic Racing video where he was talking about the motion controls for one of the games. Like, what the fuck? That's gonna drain my fucking legs out. Like, I'm getting ready to end the fucking show for a second. I was like, yeah! <laughs> It makes me laugh every time I see it. It's so fucking good. But he's been doing this for a long time. I think he's been making videos for now like 10 years. He started off doing it with his uh, his younger brother, uh, then moved on to really kind of doing it uh, more his own thing. And it's just really awesome. I've watched, I think, almost all of his Versus series. I will say, though, if you do end up watching his stuff, make sure you watch it for games that you're either not interested in or that you've already played, because uh, he does go into uh, incredible detail, and if it's anything story-related, he will likely spoil it. So, so for example, when he did his Mother 3 uh, episode, I obviously didn't watch that because I did a Let's Play of it. But I did come back and watch it afterwards, so. But yeah, just immensely entertaining, a really great gaming and, uh, what would you even call that? What, like, the guys like Angry Video Game Nerd and uh, some call me Johnny and the guys that just talk about these like individual games. Is that like a gaming commentator? Something? I, I don't know. Is there a name for that? But he's a good one of those. <laughs> I'm also going to tell you right now, I'm actually subscribed to a lot of channels that are kind of like that that discuss individual games like that. So, for example, Video Game Donkey! Probably the only human being on Earth who's ever said that Knack 2 is Game of the Year. Video Game Donkey is an interesting sort of hodgepodge of a number of things. He does a lot of parody videos where he'll just be just totally, like, in character, pretending like something, one of the worst games ever is the greatest thing ever. Yeah, we have platforming, but we've de-emphasized jumps within that context. Do you know what that means? That means when Knack walks over to a gap, it turns into a cutscene of him jumping over it. Welcome to the game, Nick. And the other times he'll actually do these really well-written deep dives into games where he talks about the good, the bad, the ugly, or just things about the gaming industry in general, like a discussion about gaming critics, what it means to be a game journalist. He's got its absolutely delightful wit to all of his videos, to all of his content. You just can't help but smile throughout his entire videos. He's constantly playing the like over cocky character that just gets shot down, especially in games like Dark Souls or some of the the Mario Maker levels. Yep, this is looking like a 1.3 level to me, because because it's so easy for me. Look at how easy it is for me to win. I'm actually falling asleep, so if I die, it's because I fell asleep because it was too easy. But yeah, I laugh out loud on almost all of his videos. There's not many YouTubers I can say that about, so really, give him a watch if you haven't ever seen his stuff. All right, next up, we got Peanut Butter Gamer. Good old peebs. I think I subscribed to him about a couple years ago, and I'd seen his stuff before, mostly his uh, his uh, his hacking videos where he will go into uh, uh, certain games like Mario 64, or Breath of the Wild, or some random Zelda game, and almost hack it, and it'll like just fuck around with it. And it's just freaking hilarious. I also don't even know how he's doing. It. I don't know how he's going to there actually hacking the games like this. He must have some mad hacking skills or, or something, or just using a, an emulator. <laughs> but either way, it's really hilarious to watch. But also, what really made me stay in and subscribe to him was just his uh, honestly, his it's just his sense of humor. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, I find it hilarious, <laughs> but it's something that make, brings out sort of like your inner child. I feel like yes, he, he does have a lot of songs in his videos, uh, which he's actually a uh, an excellent singer and musician. But they always add to the the comedic effect to all of his jokes. Giving things to your girl every day, it'll rock a world. It's the only way to make her like you every day. Make sure that you don't forget a day, because if you forget a day, she will never forget that day. Later on, she will make you pay because of that day. She will never stray from that. I found you this pay. in the dick side over there. I don't even think it's rare. I found about a tin just a day. But I think that you want it anyway. It's also a lot of screaming in his stuff, which I I don't know. Maybe I'm just a simple guy, but that shit always makes me laugh, all right? I'm sorry. All right, man, that's why I scream in all my fucking videos. Uh, 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 would you shut up? I find a freaking purse! Uh, uh, Arthur, why? We'll do tons of little sketches and skits. Uh, one in particular <laughs> that really makes me laugh uh, was based off of, uh, I believe it was an Arthur reading game or something. 
where he just takes like a like a couple still images of himself and like moves his mouth to lip sync to things. Sorry, boys, said mom. It's tax season. I need my computer all day. I have to run to the office, she said. I also in particular love his good his Goodwill Games uh, videos where he goes to uh, Goodwill and just buys these random ass like obscure games like. Uh, again, a lot, of, a lot of Arthur games. Remember, like, this weird McDonald's game that, like, no one's ever heard of before? Like, offbeat Mario games that you had probably no idea existed? Just really, like, weird, but just hilarious, kooky stuff. If I had only one criticism against his channel, is that, uh, just, he doesn't upload enough, man. It's like we get, like, one video a month these days, like, what the fuck, man? I just want some more videos, peeps! I just want some more videos! But yeah, he's hilarious. A quality channel you absolutely need to check out. All right, next up, we got Scott the Waz. Hey, y'all, Scott here. This is actually one I just, I recently uh, subscribed to, just, like, probably a month ago. Scott is, he's, he's an interesting guy. I... I'm definitely a different kind of sense of humor that I, I don't think I've seen a lot of other YouTubers do. I, I think if I had to probably put his sense of humor into just like one like scene, it'd be this. This game blows. <laughs> just like everything he says, even if it's bad, it always has this big stupid shit eating grin on his face like, <laughs> so fucking funny. But again, like some other channels, he does uh, a lot of uh, deep dives into certain games. Um, but in particular, what really stands out to uh, about his work is that he does deep dives into topics that I don't see people talk about very much, like the box art of games, subscription boxes, canceled games, Club Nintendo, cheat codes, just like different aspects of the gaming culture that are just incredibly, incredibly well written. Like, I think some of these guys don't get enough credit for just actually how well written their, uh, their material for their show is. Not to mention, he also just can, God, He's so fucking funny. He can be so funny. He just throws in like these little zingers that just get you. In particular, there was a point where he was talking about uh, uh, Super Smash Brothers Brit Melee, and this and this one fucking got me. You find these things. You don't just play through the adventure mode and bada boom, all characters unlocked. No, 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 no. Melee surprises you with a new challenger approaching, always shredded in a silhouette. Like holy shit, who could this be? It's so fucking good, man. Just this absolutely just snarky, sarcastic humor of his, but it's so good. I mean, even his little intro, he's got a little bottle of Pepto-Bismol behind him. <laughs> Don't know why. And also a copy of It's Awesome, Baby. It's like his basketball game that I'd never even heard of, which then he ends up making into like this weird, like Marvel-esque universe reason behind it being there. And it just like, there's a big, he makes a big 30 minute video of describing it. So it was like a movie. It was. It's fucking great. But yeah, his channel, I think, has been exploding in popularity lately, as it honestly should be, because his his stuff is super, super good. He's currently at like 600,000 subscribers. I, I can easily see him. He's going to get in the millions easily. Just he, his stuff is just way too good. And honestly, I, I see his videos show up. Uh, he was showing up in my related for a long time, even before I subscribed to him. I think he is favoring the YouTube algorithm, which is always a good thing. But his stuff is just top notch. So it, he absolutely deserves it. Uh, definitely check him out. Catacris! Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Catacris Show, where I have to do the dirty and decide whether a game deserves me slower or savage! Okay, actually, he doesn't really say that anymore. <laughs> ah, Catacris, man, he is, he's a classic, too. He is, like, my generation gamer. Like, he talks about all the fucking Sony classics. Fucking Ape Escape, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, that Rugrats PS1 game that nobody fucking remembers, A Bug's Life, just like, it's... Like so many games, I'm like, oh my God, I remember that game. And like, he just, oh, he just hits them all. And he goes into deep depths about them. And of course, he's hilarious as well. Got a thick Aussie, Aussie, English, Aussie. Shit, I'm gonna get in trouble for this. He's got a thick accent of some kind, which just blends beautif beautifully with his comedic timing. I think in particular, what he's really great at is his just, his just he'll go with long pauses and then boom, get you with the joke. Boom, right in the gut. Ah! At the end of it all though, you aren't gonna let a monkey win, are you? He has done quite a bit of rebranding over the years, sort of changing his style. I think he, he's mentioned before how he's a, a type of person that doesn't want to stick to any one type of thing for too, too long, you know? Wants to try to mix things up, which I absolutely understand. As a, as a YouTuber that uh, uh, does tons of uh, gaming parts and stuff, I can understand wanting to mix up your content. It's kind of why I'm making this video, right? I like mixing shit up too. But again, quality content creator, 
absolutely deserve your attention, especially if you were like me and you grew up with the fucking PS1, all right? You got to get experience that goodness. He is right up your alley. He will hit all those fucking nostalgia points as well as make you learn shit you didn't realize existed. Next up, we got the Game Theorist, good old Matt Pat. Now, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. I watch his stuff mainly for a lot of his lore theories about FNAF <laughs> and Undertale and a lot of those kinds of games and less about the theories in regards to like how fucking deadly is Mario's stomp or or how Kirby manages to fly or or how fast is Sonic really going or stuff like that. I, I just kind of care about the ones that where he's actually finding lore and things that actually have lore, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like Scott Cawthon's actually putting this shit in there because he wants people to fucking find it. And he's going in there and he's finding it. And it's always fascinating to watch. Like his stuff is always incredibly well written, but it's actually like he, he comes up with theories that are make you go, oh shit. That actually could be true. Uh, sometimes you watch a lot of these theory kind of things and you go like, that just sounds like fucking horseshit. You're just pulling that crap out of your ass. And honestly, with him, I don't feel that way a lot of times. I find a lot of his stuff to be surprisingly convincing. Not to mention, he's just a very charismatic and uh, honestly funny guy. He's got a lot of great editors for uh, his videos. Like seriously, they do such an amazing job uh, cutting together and putting like, God, there's so many graphics. Like I see watching his theories and I just go, oh my God, just the amount of editing in this is fucking ridiculous for like 20 to 25 minutes of freaking content. When I see that, I, my insides kind of clench a little bit because I'm like, oh my God, this editing takes so fucking long to make. But they've got a really great quality to them. Uh, I'm actually also subscribed to their live stream channel, which uh, where Matt Pat will play uh, either with his wife or with uh, their random YouTubers or besides just by himself. And uh, they're also very surprisingly enjoyable as well. Like he is just honestly a, I don't know, he's, he's an interesting guy. It's very interesting to see him play through, especially a game like FNAF and see him like dissect things, parse through information and figure things out on his own. And also it's just, it's quite funny. And uh, his wife is honestly very delightful too. She does a lot of funny little voices for characters when they're playing games and uh, uh, they they sort of go off each other uh, just very well. And it's, it's most people who are gamers probably know about MadPat, but he's at the top of the gaming uh, community for a reason. He's got some serious talent. Absolutely. Jim motherfucking Sterling. Oh, thank God for him. Just thank God. I love Jim. <laughs> I do. Man, no, if you want some seething commentary, look no further than Jim motherfucking Sterling. He's best known for his uh, Jim Quisitions, where he does uh, a very eloquently written research into specific topics in mainly the gaming industry. Uh, some of the things that he's best known for is pointing out uh, a lot of the problems with the gaming industry. A lot of things that people just don't really talk about. And I think a lot of things that you don't see mainstream media talk about much because maybe because it's just so niche, I guess, but still incredibly important. Like, for example, he's talked a lot about the crunch time for uh, a number of gaming companies, guys like NetherRealm Studios and Rockstar who become very guilty of just pushing their workers just far beyond their limit, as well as microtransactions and video games, whether it should be considered gambling or not, and just lots of really important things to discuss and things that need to be brought to people's attention. And like I said, his stuff is incredibly well written. He actually started off over uh, where uh, Yahtzee was over on uh, The Escapist, but eventually he left them and, and started his own thing over on on YouTube. I will say, I think some of his uh, his side content where he talks about like pogs and uh, just like random non sequiturs, that's gonna be a little weird. It's not really like like the mo what I'm really like watching for the most interesting things, but I, I get it, I do get it. I think it just kind of adds to his just kind of quirky personality. He's also a big fan of wrestling too. And also the Yakuza series, Fine taste, as should all of us. But if you want to know what's going on in the game community as a whole, what developers are doing, just jumping into that culture and understanding like what goes into a game creation, he's probably one of the best people to give a listen because his stuff is really good. Next up, I got Kroby Cat. Cro I think that's how you say it. Crobe Cro Cat, Crobity Doodly Dodly Cat. And he's actually a little bit like Jim Sterling, except unlike him, he doesn't have any commentary. What, what he does is basically, uh, again, uh, usually seething criticisms of the gaming industry or game launches in particular, but it's more that he just will just take uh, snippets and pieces from uh, random videos and make a bit of a montage. And we'll talk about, for example, No Man's Sky and its failed uh, launch, right? We'll talk about the expectations that people have for the game, even the developers, you know, creating those expectations and then the actual reality of the product itself. Uh, same thing for like Mass Effect Andromeda, Watch Dogs, how we looked at E3 and the actual release of the game, different things like that. And again, it's always really interesting because it just, it paints a, a lovely picture of uh, what goes through a lot of these companies' heads, you know, the fucking 
cutbacks, the budget cuts, or just the ridiculous buildup of expectation only for it to come fucking crashing down when the game has actually revealed. It just kind of shows the danger that is the, the hype machine, you know? So much money is just paid into hype, but not actual fucking tangible quality. That said, now all of his videos are like that. He also posts some random ones, which he's actually posted with one video called Super Real Mario Odyssey, which is one of my favorite videos on this entire website, I shit you not. It's basically just the Super Mario Odyssey launch trailer redone in Grand Theft Auto 4, and it is as glorious as it sounds. I've watched that video like 300 times and I never get tired of it. He's sort of an off, like, like a different kind of YouTuber in that you really, he don't, I don't think this person actually ever says anything in his, any of his videos, except maybe through text. It's just really just through these compilations, but it's very interesting and it very uh, revealing of the gaming industry. John Tron. Talking about someone who has uh, changed his, uh, his stuff over the years. Like he used to be just like, uh, other channels like Angry Video Game Nerd, some call me Johnny, Kai those guys where he talked about games individually. Uh, and, you know, again, it was always with a uh, sense of humor to it. Um, but now I sort of moved away from video games and more moved towards more uh, zany movies, training videos, off kilter commercials. He did that one video where he talked about the flex tape commercials, how ridiculous those were, which I, I just fucking bet that thing's got 43 million views. You know that flex tape just was rolling dough from that shit. That's the best free covers anyone could ask for, I bet. And God damn it, John Tron is so fucking funny, man. Like, like the timing and just the, the pacing of his jokes and this, just the writing of his material is so hilarious. Like I laugh my ass off in almost every one of his videos. Oh my god. There's this one moment where he was talking about this animated version of that Titanic uh, movie, which, which absolutely slays me every time I see it for just how out of nowhere it is. Thank you. Oh, what are you doing? You're gonna get a disease. This is how the Black Plague started. Like, why? <laughs> why does she do that? Why is this so fucking funny? He's just got an amazing sense of humor, and goddamn, his stuff is just so funny. I will say, though, he has gone a few uh, hiatuses, though. Yeah, it was like, what, there was like one time where he disappeared for like almost a year or something and didn't post anything, and I think there was a time before that where, again, he was gone for almost a year, so... Uh, he does tend to sometimes disappear, but at least right now he does appear to be uploading fairly consistently. It's clear that his uh, his budget has also increased because good lord, he's definitely hired a lot more people to help him create these videos. I don't know, his sense, sense of humor never ceases to make me laugh. Okay, next up we've got Ah Me. Ah Me? Is that, is that how you say that? It's kind of a weird name, honestly. It's, a, it's, it's an acronym, A-W-E Me. And you know what these guys are best known for is the freaking Man at Arms videos. Holy shit, those guys are fucking amazing. Basically, there are these group of blacksmiths who uh, they create these beautiful one-to-one -one replicas of gaming and anime-related weaponry. And it's just, it's incredible. Just incredible watching them work. Like, these guys are genuinely artists, you know, masters of their craft. And just watching them turn, like, this bit chunk of iron into this beautiful, like, sword or they even did some keyblades and shit. They did, did hammers, they've done SpongeBob spatula, but they always take it and they always actually make it into an actual weapon, like something that could actually like deal damage. And then at the end, they always take whatever weapon they make and they use it to like do like a test and like cut through like jugs of milk or watermelons and stuff. And it's, it's really cool. Like these guys are, I mean, they are, they're artists. And it's just so cool seeing like these gaming weapons, you know, these classic weapons get remade into real life. I will say Ami does do, uh, well, they have done other videos. I think they've, I think they've kind of moved away from their other content because they've kind of realized that the only reason anyone really watches them is because of the Man at Arms series, which is, well, kind of true, honestly. But man, if you guys want to just see some, like, some masters of their craft just do just some amazing things, you have to check them out. Especially if you're an anime slash gaming fan, you're just going to be like, oh my god, this is the coolest shit ever. All right, next up, we got Nakey Jakey. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so I, I came across him, I think, about a six months ago, and I had never heard of him before, although he's actually been uh, a YouTuber for a good while now. What drew my attention was his video where he talked about 
the problems with Red Dead Redemption 2 and how its gameplay is dated. You know, it needs to be changed, it needs to be fixed. And man, like, again, another example of someone who is incredibly good at writing an interesting, research-driven, and hilarious script. Oh my God, his videos, like, I busted a gut laughing watching that. That was the first video I ever watched with him was that video. And the moment I finished, I was like, I am subscribing to this guy. This is amazing. And I went, I've went, gone back and I watched through uh, a huge backlog of his videos. And I've laughed my ass off at all those too. Like, his stuff is really great. So he's a bit similar, I think, to Scott the Waz in that he will touch on a lot of things that a lot of aspects of gaming that you don't really think about, like, for example, uh, moms in gaming, dads in gaming, the art of video game commercials, crappy water levels, the ports of Flash games. But he also does dabble into other things, like uh, talk about like his his time with the Disney Channel, a lot of very nostalgic things, or when he talked about uh, when people used to illegally download music. And it's it just for me in particular, just that remembering that time, that period of my life was just like, like, oh, it's just such a blast from the past. And that I think is something that Nikki Jakey in particular really draws on uh, more than almost any other YouTuber I've, I've seen. And that is that feeling of nostalgia, that that cherished feeling of of childhood bliss, you know? I think that's why his his avatar itself and why he has the sort of childish name of Nakey Jakey is that he is sort of harnessing his inner child and bringing it out in all of us in his videos. His topics in his videos are really fascinating, but they're also just so funny. I just, I can't stress that enough, guys. He, he does most of his videos sing on top of Yoga Ball for whatever reason. That in itself is already hilarious. Like, listen to this moment from the Red Dead Redemption 2 video. Just tell me it doesn't make you laugh your fucking ass off. It feels pointless as hell to try and roleplay as a scrappy outlaw on the run when you have a thousand dollars from doing a couple story missions. In old west times, that was like three billion dollars. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a cowboy named Arthur Morgan. I thought I was the CEO of Apple, a.k.a. Bill Gates. It's so fucking good, man. It's so good. I love his content. I'm honestly ashamed that it took me this long to know that he existed. I love it. I uh, the only again the only downside to his stuff is that he doesn't post very often. All right, he posted a music video recently, and then before that was three months ago, and then before that was six months ago. Come on, man. Come on. I need more of your videos, man. Your shit's too good. Keep on the down low. Uh, next up, we've got Super Eye Patch Wolf. Th this is someone that dabbles in both I games and anime, and he tends to talk about the impacts that a lot of different uh, games and anime have had on uh, the industry as a whole. For example, one of my one of the videos I really loved from him was his was the video he had about Akira, where he talked about how just groundbreaking and just influential the movie was to all of anime, especially in the West, because like before Akira, the anime was very little known in the West. You know, we barely knew about it, but that that movie just transcended geographical location. You know, just was so widespread and so important for like the spread of anime to the West. Toonami, the, the, a big part of my childhood where I got a lot of my anime was only, only came to be because of Akira's influence. And he does a lot of videos talking about that, talking about the state of Shonen, Jump, what's the big new hot thing lately, why you should watch certain series, why you should play certain series. Like for example, he did a, a wonderful video talking about the Yakuza series, a video where he talks about the tragic history of Shenmue, which honestly, I, I didn't know a lot about. It was really interesting to see this, uh, the development hell that the game was in that I, I didn't realize was a thing. His stuff is incredibly well written. And also he's got a very, very soothing voice. I don't know, just like when he's sort of reading out his, his script, it's just like, like, ah, uh, I don't know. It just kind of feels good on your ear holes. You're like, mm, yeah, it's the good shit. But he clearly does a lot of research for each of his videos. And you just feel like, you just feel like you're watching like this really excellent documentary on all things gaming and anime. He also did a great discussion of uh, why he thought Final Fantasy 15 was a mediocre disappointment, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I know some people are gonna not be happy about that, but that's, he like basically mirrored exactly how I felt about that game. And I was like, oh man. He's even done a video where he talked about uh, the story of The Undertaker and wrestling. And I'm not actually like, I don't really watch wrestling at all, but it was still so fascinating to watch, just like to, to get a look into that culture. His videos have a ton of thought and time and effort put into them. I mean, which is probably why he only uploads like once a month. Each video that he posts is always just like an experience. And I, I really do recommend, if you haven't seen any of his stuff, oh man. 
like you could dump whole fucking weekend watching all of his videos because they're just like like i don't know you feel like you're watching like a netflix series or something you know something like like someone really sat down and spent some good time putting into this well okay man that's not a good idea because netflix has been adding a lot of shit to their their fucking series too but what i mean is the good netflix that's what i mean and last but not least actually reached the end of this oh my god last person i'm subscribed to is nitro rad nitro rad this is actually a bit of a smaller creator, at least compared to some of the other ones I brought up before. In terms of sub count, he's actually right around where I am. But he is similar to uh, channels like Some Call Me Johnny, Cat Icarus, where he does deep dives into individual games. He has dabbled a lot in a lot of PS1 classics, again, like Cat Icarus, which uh, I very much enjoyed. But he also dabbles in a lot of very niche, very different games, like a lot of RPG Maker classics that not a lot of people talk about, or random indie games like Hypnospace Outlaw or Anodyne, or fan games like Mother Cognitive Dissonance or You Nikki Dream Diary. Just like something you just don't see many gaming commentator uh, type channels really talk about. It's super fascinating. I don't know if I would say his videos are usually not hilarious. Most of the time, it's very just kind of a chill, uh, look and discussion of each of the games, but very well written. That said, that doesn't mean he can't be funny. No, like he will sprackly pull out just some unbelievably clever and hilarious shit. For example, his April Fool's Day video. This freaking monster, when this came out, I was like, what the fuck, Nitro Rad? Where did this shit come from? He jammed a Drake and Josh a Malcolm in the Middle, and an Eric Andre parody all into this video. And it was super well produced and fucking hilarious and well written. I was like, oh my God, how long did it take you to make this fucking beast? This shit is insane, insane. Like honestly, it's a shame this thing only has 73,000 views. This shit was so unbelievably good. It was really, it, it honestly just caught me off guard because normally in his regular stuff, he's usually very kind of chill, kind of relaxed, chill guy. But in this one, he plays the Eric Andre character, the zany dude, he smashes shit. He's, he's, he's blowing stuff up, just, just going fucking crazy. It's just, oh my God, it was so good. But yeah, I learned a lot about uh, games from his videos, like stuff that I just, I didn't know about or just learning about like little indie gyms that I've never heard of before. Although I try to avoid the ones that I think, well, maybe I actually might play that at some point down the line. But yeah, again, he's actually a relatively small creator, but someone I do see getting very big because his stuff is just so good. Seriously, you guys, if you see his stuff, go, go watch his, his April Fool special because that thing deserves way more views. I, it just has so much fucking funny shit in there, man. Like, oh my God, like that, that just had so much production value put into that and I just fucking crazy man okay yes so those are I think almost all of the channels that I am currently subscribed to I, I don't think I really missed out on any oh my god yeah that's gonna this is gonna be fun to edit it's gonna be a real fun to edit watch I mean it's gonna it's gonna take a goddamn long time I'm gonna go in I'm gonna have to grab a lot of Download a lot of these guys' videos to include here. It's gonna take a while. But honestly, I, I'm glad I actually did this. This is something I want to do for quite a while. Because I feel like this is just not something that's said enough. Not something that YouTubers do a lot to show like the appreciation to other YouTubers for the work that they've done and the influence they've had on their own work. So honestly, if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this video, I recommend to you, no, I challenge you, to make a video like this, make a, a video talking about the channels that you're subscribed to, you know? Like, why do you watch them? What do you like about them? What inspires you about them? You know, you don't necessarily have to just say all of them. I know some people are subscribed to like hundreds of channels, but maybe just pick out your, your top favorite ones of those channels, you know? And while yes, it's it's good, you know, publicity, I guess, for the, the channels you're talking about, I, I think honestly, they just appreciate just to know that uh, you care that much about their videos. I don't know, this is kind of how I, I, I see this video at least, I don't know. But yes, uh, if anyone who actually uh, I mentioned in in this video is watching this um uh, i just want to say thank you thank you so much for inspiring not just me but also other youtubers on this platform for uh continuing to put out just this amazing content stuff that i just i am in awe of i'm in awe of just your unbelievable talent and your genuine love for what you do and i just i love to see that i love to see that passion in people because it always leads to some of the best content that you can find on the platform but yes if if there's anyone on this list that you never heard of before i do really recommend you go check out their content and if you do enjoy what they do and the the stuff they make yeah subscribe to them absolutely i'll include links to everybody's channel down below make sure to send some love Tell them Nico B sent you. And like I said, if you're a YouTuber, I challenge you to make a video like this. If you have time in your schedule, I mean, I get it. We're all fucking busy. You don't have to do it. I'm sure the YouTubers you talk about will greatly appreciate it either way. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is the uh, final one-off video for me. 
Uh, I don't know if I will have, oh, uh, God damn it. No, there's no way I'm gonna have, there's no way I'm gonna have this jump tomorrow. So it's probably means that the next series probably won't start till I get back for my move, uh, because I am gonna be uh, moving the start of next week. And this weekend I'll have a live stream, one last live stream, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to start the new series till after I get back, so. Uh, unfortunately, but I will have it the moment I am set up in my new place At least the basic setup my computer and stuff all plugged back in again And I will try to get right back into uh, getting you guys your regular daily content during that whole week though I will be gone. So you likely won't be getting any videos from me So just bear with this video drop for a bit. I will have videos to the end of this week though So just hang in there. I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter of course and uh, let you know when I am uh getting back and I'll show you uh, pictures of like my new office and things like that and keep you updated on uh, when I'll be ready to get back into it. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this different kind of video. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out and subscribe if you're already become Piggy Penguin or this will be where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always guys, till next time, stay classy Piggy Penguins.